Hello and welcome, this is Jennifer and I'm glad you're here. Today I'm sharing with you a fun way to combine your stamps and your dies for a new layered look. Now this is often re referred to as the eclipse technique, but today I'm focusing on using dies and sentiment stamps for a really cool continuous but layered look. It's a great way to create a focal point on a card with layer and dimension. It's also nice for a clean and simple design. I will be demonstrating three different ways of doing this technique with three different types of dies. For this first one, I'm using a new die set from Simon Says Stamp called the Layered Birdie Set. I love using birds on my cards, and this is a great one, perfect for this technique. Before we get going, I also wanted to show you two other bird die sets from Simon Says Stamp and give you a little tip. First, this is the Layered Chickadee, isn't he cute? And then the other is the Layered Owl. Notice I cut the layers from white cardstock and glued it together, and I'm putting those in the pockets. Whenever I get new layering die sets, I cut them from white cardstock, glue them together, and put them in the pocket with it so that I have it for reference for size or what it looks like later on. I find this to be really helpful in knowing what my dies look like. I will also be using the older etched eucalyptus wreath die on this card. And for a sentiment, I'm using the new Love Garden Greetings set. This has some great greetings and a nice kind of classic font. I'll be using the Sending Love on this one. There are coordinating dies available, but I don't use them for this technique. Okay, I've got my Misty stamping tool here, and I also have a piece of cardstock where I have taped my assembled bird die cut. Remember how I do it from white cardstock? And then a wreath around it. I just have it taped there so that I can plan out where I want everything to be. I can later take these pieces apart and put them in the pockets as my example piece. So I'm positioning that sending love to cross over the bird die cut and the wreath die cut. When I'm happy with the position of the sentiment, I close the door on my Misty to grab it. I'm gonna leave that sentiment there in the stamping tool and I won't move it for quite a while. I put my little guide that I made from white cardstock off to the side so I can refer to it again. And now I have a fresh piece of white cardstock that I'll stamp this on. This is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. You could use any black ink you want here and I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Now this is a pigment ink that I chose, so I'm going to heat set it. I just want that to be completely dry. Then I'm going to add some detail to this whole background. For this, I'm using the Concord and Ninth Quilted Card Front Die. I love this because it does like this faux stitching quilted pattern, but it doesn't cut the outside edge. So you can cut the cardstock to whatever you want and use that die. So I'm taping my cardstock with the stamp sentiment on it right onto this die. And then I will run it through my die cut machine as I would any die. I'm using my Spellbinders machine. Now you could stop after you do this. After you cut with this, it'll do that faux piercing. But here's a tip. If you want a little more dimension to your faux piercing and actually make it stand out more, after you cut it, get out your embossing mat. Put that on your platform. Keep the cardstock and the die taped together, then run that through your machine. That'll give it more, it'll kind of intensify the look of the faux stitching. It's pretty amazing how much it helps. So I always do that whenever I use a piercing or faux stitching die. And you can do this with whatever die cut machine you have. So now that I have our background complete, let's start adding our die cuts. First, I'm adding the light green wreath. So this is cut from Concord and Ninth Sprout cardstock. Most cardstock I use today is either Concord and Ninth or Hero Arts. I'm going to glue this right onto my stamped greeting piece. So it's going to get glued right on top of the greeting. And I'm kind of following that guide, remember, that I taped together over there on the left. So once I have this in place, I use my pressure tool for my Misty to just press it down to make sure that glue has adhered. And then I put it back into my Misty stamping tool and stamp the sentiment again. So this will add the letters on top of the green die cut. So we still have that continuous sentiment across the die cut. Now I wanted a lot of dimension to this, so I cut a second of the same wreath in the same color, and I'm gluing it right on top. So this was an added thought here, so now I need to stamp on top of this too. I do find it helpful to stamp on top of each layer we add, just to keep everything looking crisp and continuous. Now I have two darker green wreaths and I'm just going to go ahead and start out by gluing these together because I want that added dimension, but you don't have to if you don't want to. You could definitely just do one layer of each. 
Now I'm putting glue on the back of that layered die cut and I'm adding that on top of the other wreath, offsetting it just so the wreath feels a little more full. You'll see some of the light green leaves kind of stick out from the edges and I really love the look of that layering. But now that we've added more die cutting over our sentiment, we need to stamp that sentiment again. Every time I add a die cut, I'll just stamp some more on top of it and it'll keep that sentiment continuous. Now we can assemble our bird. I cut the body from light blue cardstock and I'm sandwiching the legs between two layers of the body. That just gives me more dimension. Now we can add him onto our card using some strong liquid adhesive. I'm using Gina K Connect. And notice once again, I'm gluing over my sentiment. I'm actually doing that on purpose just to really make this technique stand out even more. So once again, I put it into my Misty stamping tool, stamp that sentiment, and that will add the letters back on top of the bird. So you can see it still says sending love very clearly. I finished the bird by adding the other layer pieces that come with the layering set. And I'm just gluing these right onto the bird and it doesn't overlap any stamping, so we don't need to stamp again. Now, one thing I wanted to note, if you see any little edges of cardstock that's like are showing through and not black, you can use a black pen to fix that. But I have a tip for that and I'll share that later on. But first, let's finish this card. I have a white note card that is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I covered it with a piece of Altenew double-sided adhesive. The reason I did that is there's some texture to our background because of the quilted cover plate we used. So I really want this to attach well. So I found this to be the best option. I put that in the corner of my Misty stamping tool so that I could take the front panel and line it up. So I just put both in the corner and that'll line it up and make sure the front panel is glued directly onto the card, nice and straight. So basically that was a white card with this panel glued on front. Both were four and a quarter by five and a half inches. I then use my bone folder to make sure that textured background really grabs to the adhesive behind it. For an eye, I used Lucy's card Soft Black Pearls. I feel like that's a fun way to add a little dimension, but you could do a black pen if, instead if you prefer. I also added some Trinity Stamps Dew Drops. These are new, they're cool. They're like a rounded dew drop, but color on the back of it. So a little bit of color shows through that dew drop. So this is a light blue, and I just think it adds quite a bit of interest without being too distracting. So here's a look at our completed card. I could have just assembled the die cuts and added maybe a stamp sentiment strip in that location, but there's something really cool about having that sentiment go over all of those layered die cuts in the background. It just gives a really cool, continuous look, and it definitely looks much better in real life. I wish I could capture all the dimension there is. So next time you have some die cuts or stamped images and you need to add a sentiment, Try this, try having it go continuously across it. It really steps up a simple design. Okay, it's time for our next card. And this time I'll show you another way of doing this technique and you can choose which would work best for you. And I'm taking one single die, but I'm gonna make it look like it's a layering die. So I have some tips for that. This is the Simon Says Stamp Wreath of Love, a great single die that you can change up in many ways. I also will be using the Simon Says Stamp All About You stamp set. This has lots of great options for this technique because the sentiments are nice and bold. Now off screen, I die cut from several different colors of cardstock that heart wreath and you can see them over to the left. I'm taking one to kind of plan out where my sentiment will go. I have a piece of white cardstock there that is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. Once I'm happy with the sentiment, I can close the door on my Misty stamping tool, and we're gonna leave that there for all of our stamping. I'll start by stamping it onto that white cardstock. Now notice I'm double or triple stamping here. That's because my ink pad is really dry and needs to be re-inked. Now this time I'm doing things a little bit different. I'm gonna stamp all of my die cuts before I glue them together, so bear with me. I'm planning to have my wreath die cut right about there, and I'm just taping it over there on the left so I can slide out my background. Now I'm putting the negative space around this, and I'll tape the negative space onto, onto the pad of my Misty. So this negative space will stay here for a bit. This gives me a place where I can pop in each of my die cuts to stamp on them. So before I stamped each die cut after I glued them down, this time I'm stamping each die cut before 
It really doesn't matter which method you use, they both give great results. So I'm stamping the sentiment onto the wreath and you'll see it just stamps in certain areas there. Then you can take out that die cut and let's check, let's make sure it lines up nicely and look at that. You could even get away with just doing this and adding a few pearls, simple, clean design. But I'm gonna add all those layers because that's what I really like, especially with a simple design. So I am stamping the same sentiment onto each of these hearts, each time just taking the heart die cut, popping it into that negative space, and then stamping. This way, I can be sure that the stamping is done in the exact same spot on each of the hearts. The nice thing about this method is all your stamping's done and you can kind of forget about it as you move on to the assembly. Okay, but first I want to add some detail to the background. I love using those piercing background dies. This is the Simon Says Stamp Detail Petal Die. This cuts the outside edge, but only does a piercing panel in the center area. Perfect for this technique. Once again, I'll run it through my machine as I would with any die. But before I take it apart, I'm going to use the embossing mat also. So I'll take the tan embossing mat, put my die with the cardstock right on top of it, then the embossing plate, which comes with the machine, and run that through. This just kind of adds a little more dimension to those little holes that we've pierced. And all die cut machines should come with an embossing mat. So there you can see that detailed pattern in the background and our sentiment is still nice and crisp. It is always better to stamp your sentiment before doing that background detail die. Now we can start our heart wreath. I'm starting with a white heart die cut that has the stamping on it and I'm gluing that right on top of our background and you'll see it's easy to line up the sentiment. Now when you do this, sometimes if you look from the side, you'll see like the side of the die cut is white, so you, it doesn't look continuous black. If that bothers you, you can use a black pen to add the black color to the side of the die cut, but honestly, I don't think it's necessary. One thing you could do is instead use a black dye ink. That absorbs more into the paper and it would keep the edges from being so crisp white. I used a pigment ink, which sits on top. So try it with a dye ink. But honestly, my dye ink was being used by somebody who's helping me put teacher gifts together. So I had to go with what I had. But now we can keep building these on. So the first layer I want is the green. I could have skipped that white layer underneath, but I wanted it under there for added dimension. But I'm starting with the solid light green. So the entire die cut as is, is glued down. Now I've got a darker green and I'm going to cut away some of the leaves. What I'm cutting away is anything that I want to be light green. This will get glued on top. So anything I cut away will show the light green die cut below it. So you can change this up however you want. What I did is I just cut off some of the leaves. Then I can put glue on the back of this and add it right on top of the light green die cut. What I'm doing here is building up layers and each of the layers from now on will be changed a bit. And it gives you the look of a layered die set, but really it was just one die. So see how some light green leaves are peeking out. Well, now let's go on to another color. This time I'm using the bright peach and I'm cutting away everything except for the three big flowers. That way I'll have a heart with three big peach flowers. We'll glue that on top of our dark green die cut and the green leaves will peek through. So this can be done in so many ways. So many different ways to do this. I'll show you another way you can add color in my next example. But this is fun for me because you're changing what the dye was intended to be used for and giving it a different look, kind of stepping it up. Layered dye sets are more expensive. This is a less expensive single die, and with a little bit of work, you can make it look like a layered die set. Okay, so now I have my heart with just the three big flowers. I'll put glue on that, glue on top of the green, and look at that. You have your two different colors of green leaves and your bright peach, peach flowers. Next, I have a lighter peach, and I'm cutting off absolutely everything from it so that I just have the heart outline. Now I can put glue on top of our dark peach heart and add the light peach heart on top of it. So look at that fun layered piece. 
I did cut a few of the tiny little flowers off of a yellow die cut and added that onto the green die cut so that we had that pop of yellow too. I think there are three little flowers that I'm cutting off and adding in the yellow. And I'm sorry my head keeps getting in the way, but the best way to make sure you have everything lined up and layered nicely is to look straight from above. Okay, I have a four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding white note card. I covered that with double-sided adhesive from Altenew. And then I'll put our panel on the front. Again, the reason I'm using a sheet of adhesive here is remember how I used the piercing die on that background? I wanted to make sure that we held on to that texture. And the best way to do that is with a lot of adhesive. And the best way to get a lot of adhesive is with an adhesive double-sided sheet like this. I then use my bone folder to really press that down so I can be sure it's adhered. And I'm using little yellow dewdrops from Trinity Stamps to add little accents around the heart. Okay, so here is the completed card. You can see how the sentiment is continuous across it because I stamped each die cut before I glued the layers together. You can see those little yellow dewdrops. I did glue some of those on top of my sentiment because they look like little um, dots above the flowers, but you could skip that if you wanted to. So there I was able to take a single die and make it look like a layering die set and also get that continuous look of the sentiment across the background and all of the layers. You can see how this works really well with large, bold sentiments, but the last example had a smaller one and it worked great too. Okay, now we're on to my third example. This is the most elaborate, I guess, of the three techniques. I'm using an outline die and I'll add the pieces into the inside. Took a bit of time, but definitely worth it. For this, I'm using the Concord and Ninth Big on You stamp set. I love this set. I also feel these large, bold sentiments are great for this technique. I'm also using this new die from Simon Says Stamp called the Peony and Leaves die. It's an outline die, so it cuts the outline. It's great for die cut inlay. I cut that from white cardstock and I'm just positioning it where I want it onto a white piece of cardstock that is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. I'm just planning out where I want my sentiment to be. So I'm kind of centering this on the cardstock, making sure I'm overlapping with the die cut quite a bit just to make the technique really stand out even more. Once I'm happy, I close the door on my stamping tool and now we can stamp this onto the white background once again with black ink. At this time, I'm using the Memory Box Pinpoint Leaf Plate Die to add some texture to our background. I am again running it through my die cut machine as I would with any die. Then I will run, th run it through again using the embossing mat. And this just makes the piercing a little deeper and adds more texture. You can totally skip these background dies if you want. I just think it adds a lot, especially since there's a lot of white space. Okay, now we need to do some die cutting. But for this, I want all the pieces, those little pieces to stay inside the die cut. Sometimes when you die cut with a die like this, all the pieces stay in the cardstock die cut, which is what I want, but sometimes they stay stuck in the die itself. Especially if you used a die a lot, they tend to want to stay in the die and you have to pop them out individually. Here is a trick you can do if you don't want the pieces to stay in the die which I don't want. So I'm taking the release paper from that all to new adhesive sheet that I had left over from before, that piece you peel away. I'm using that to help with my die cutting. So what I do is I put that between my cardstock and my die, and that way when I cut, that release paper kind of forces the die cut pieces to pop out of the die. So when I run it through my die cut machine, see how all the little die cut pieces are staying in that outline die. I think one big one popped out, but other than that, they all stay in there. Now there are release paper die cuts stuck on top, but you can easily just scratch those away and remove those. They just pop right off. Now I have my outline die cut with all the little pieces still inside. I'm putting glue all over the back of this and I'll glue this right on top of our Miss You, kind of positioned where I planned it earlier. Now you can see those release paper die cuts are still up there. That's okay. I can take them off once this is dry. A few of the pieces popped out so I just glued those back in. Once this is all pressed down, I can just remove the release paper off the top. It comes right off. 
It's not glued there. It's just kind of stuck there from being squished in the die cut machine. And there we have our outline die cut with all the little pieces on the inside. Now we can put that back into our MISTI and stamp on top of it again, always stamping on each layer. Now I have another white die cut here that I cut with the release paper. This is another way to remove the release paper. Just use a piece of sticky tape along the top and it'll pull off those little pieces of release paper. So after I have those release paper pieces removed, this time I'm gonna add color to this die cut before we add it to our card. So I'm putting color over all of the leaves with a green Copic marker. I think this is YG25. And then I grabbed some pink Copic markers and went over the flower with that. So I'm coloring the outline and the pieces on the inside. And because I used release paper, all the pieces came out together, except I lost two little ones, which I can add back in later. No big deal. So now I'm putting glue all over the back of this. And then I'll glue this on top of the white die cut that's on our background. So I'm just going to pick this up and line it up. I could have skipped the white underneath, but again, I put that under there so I would have some added dimension. I really want this to stand up to really intensify the technique that we're doing. I did have those two pieces that fell out, so I'm just adding those back in, and then we can add the color on here. I could have colored after, but I didn't want to accidentally get any of the marker on our background. I wanted to keep that nice and white. Okay, so we added a die cut, so it's time to stamp on top of it again. Since we're stamping on top of a die cut or little die cut pieces all puzzled together, you'll see there are those little cracks or nooks and crannies between the die cut pieces where the ink isn't reaching. A dye ink pad would work better for this, as I mentioned, but I just went in and filled in those little nooks and crannies with a black pen and it only took a few minutes. Now this is the part where I'm stepping this up. I love doing die cut inlay. What I'm actually doing here is gluing the inside pieces on top. So the inside pieces will actually stand up taller. Bear with me, you'll see in the end what I'm doing. I'm just adding some light green die cut pieces onto the leaves. So this is kind of like a die cut inlay technique, except we're not inlaying, inlaying them, we're adding them on top. Just gives a really cool layered look. You could definitely do a basic die cut inlay here if you want. I love to put pieces together like this. I enjoy it. If you don't enjoy it, you could definitely do the other techniques I showed you or check out this video on the top right that I'm linking, which gives tips on making die cut inlay a little bit easier. But in this case, I'm just doing piece by piece, adding some light green pieces and some dark green die cut pieces right on top of the color die cut we have on our card. Now let's do the flower. You'll see it better here. I have three different colors of pink cardstock up there that I cut from that background die. And I'm taking out pieces from that popping them out and adding them onto our card. So I'm just lining it up with the die cut that's on our card. Very easy to see in real life. I just put glue down, then take one of the die cut pieces and add it on. You'll be able to see that original colored die cut in the outline. So we're just adding the inside pieces, not the outline. Now some people love to color and spend a lot of time doing coloring with markers or watercolor or whatever. This is what I love to do. I love assembling die cuts. So I wanted to share this for those of you who are like me. So notice how we're having, it almost looks like a mosaic with these little pieces kind of standing up off of the outline of the rose. So I'll continue to fill in all those little pieces. It took me about 10 minutes to do that. And then what do we do? We stamp on top of it once again. Now, knowing me, I want more layers, right? So I did an additional layer of those little inside pieces. You could totally skip this, but I really wanted to make those layers stand out even more. So I glued another layer of each of the inside pieces on it. And once I had those all glued in place, I stamped yet again on top. So this card took me a little over an hour to put together, but for me, that's pretty quick because there's not much else to it. It's just that focal point. So here I'm stamping on that top of that last layer, and then I used a black pen just to get into those nooks and crannies where I felt like I wanted that black to be more intense. But again, use a dye ink and that shouldn't be a problem. Since some of the leaves are hanging off the side, I am trimming this down so that the width, including the leaves, is four and a quarter inches wide. So it'll still fit into a regular envelope. 
I cut my note card to the same size. So I think it is three and three quarter inches by five and a half inches, covering the front with double-sided adhesive and then gluing our panel right on top of that. I finished it off by adding some of the pink dew drops here and there around the flower. So here, when you get a close look, look at all of that layering. Notice how the inside pieces stand up more than the outline. It's just a fun way to use a die differently. You definitely could have just done a basic die cut inlay using this technique of stamping across it. Notice also the piercing in the background adds a lot of interest and you've got that continuous sentiment across all of it. So I hope you'll give this a try. You can do any kind of stamped image for this technique, but I really think it's most impressive when you use a sentiment stamp because that's really the focal point of your card. All right, if you're interested in the supplies that I use, I link them below to, in my YouTube description. Also, a lot of the things I use today are from a new Simon Says Stamp release. That's fantastic. I've got that linked below too. And then at the end, I have a couple other related videos, one where I show a variation of this eclipse technique. Hope that's helpful to you also. Thanks for spending this time with me and I'll be back soon with another video.